Okay, so for our next assignment, and this would be, um, I don't remember exactly what exercise, I'll have to get back to you on it. What we're going to do is we're going to draw a very similar grill, just with some slightly different details. We're going to recess the handle, um, and we're going to add a curved surface across the front. But let's start out the same way, just by sketching and getting used to a couple of things with the lid, and the lid is certainly the most complicated part, but by going through this exercise I think that uh, we'll learn a couple of things that we can apply to the grill overall. Now this time, rather than completing the box like we did over here, um, I'm just going to go ahead and start by adding in a curve and then translating that curve over to the other side. Uh, it may be a little bit lower just because of uh, this. And then I need to figure out how to translate this over to there, so I'm thinking about how quickly these are vanishing. Now, um, what we need to take into consideration now, I'm going to bow out this front and top surface first. So I'm going to find the midpoint, going down to that bottom, and then looking at this, I'm going to pull that midpoint out, uh, and then translate it up to here, and pull that midpoint out again, so there's this, this flat surface. Now as we talked about in the, the relationship of arcs versus ellipses lesson, what I want to do is I want to make sure that as I sketch this curve, that it's slow and smooth through here, and then it begins to accelerate as it's going around, and then it comes through this point tangent to a line going towards that left vanishing point. And on this one, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to draw it as two, two curves. So coming over to there, and then rolling around. And what I'm going to do on the back of this object is find the midpoint back here, and do the same thing. So there, and then I'm going to carry that point up a little bit. And that also needs to be going through tangent to a point, and it might be even a little bit more apparent up here. It's a little bit quicker there, and it's a little slower and smoother through there. And if we wanted to, we could, and I'm just going to do this, I'm going to erase it, we could then add another line that shows kind of the contour. Now, a couple of things to take note of. Look at the perceived distance here just with that little bit of a curve um, compared to the same thing over here. This is this still has, just because of force shortening, we see a little bit less of the farther, furthest half. But because this is rolling over, we see a lot less of it. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to break this, this lid up into um, three sections. And the first one is going to be about that far over, and maybe one fifth. Now, how do I translate this line over to the other side? I want to do it like mathematically and geometrically. I would basically take this point and carry it towards the left vanishing point and find that right there. Um, most of the time, we're probably going to guess on that simply because since this is freehand drawing, that, that curve isn't perfectly accurate. I hope that I've done a pretty good job of it. I just noticed that so far on this sketch, I'm doing this in, in two-point perspective. We can clean that up by changing a couple of these lines out here. And that would affect our curve and make it be a little bit quicker. Since I'm breaking this up into three parts, there's going to be two castings to the outside and then a sheet metal. Uh, internal fascia part. Oops. Excuse me, let me zoom back out. Um, an internal fascia in here. And it's going to be flat. Well, it's actually going to roll from front to back, but be flat from left to right. And we need to create some space. This is going to be our handle out here need to create some space in between this front face and that handle. 
There's also going to be, and I'll sketch in to show this first, if we look at a, another curve coming across, I'm going to sketch in a section line of what's happening here. It's going to step down just because of material thickness. And then that's going to come over, and then here's that curve right there. So we need to sketch in that offset, which isn't the easiest thing to do, and this is where using tools would be a great benefit. And back here where it's getting a little messed up, I'm going to go ahead and darken in some of that. Darken in some of this. And then sketch in that flat line right there. So there's that offset. And this is actually going to curve down going to be a radius. I'll show you the beginning and the end of that radius in just a second. There's the end and there's the beginning of that radius. And I've basically got my grill except for one thing. This maybe uh, this handle looks a little large. Let's do something funky with it. Let's actually bring let's create a little detail like that. And also what that does is it helps us kind of see over here, again, if we think about the ratio of how much I should see of this versus how much I should see of it as it rolls away from me, probably won't see that much, and so it's going to be a lot quicker to get down. Now I'm going to give my handle some thickness. There's that thickness, there's the front of the handle. Um, I guess we would see some of this handle back here as it rolled around, there's where the handle meets the back portion. That shouldn't be that dark of a line. So really all I'm doing now is just cleaning up the geometry. Since I put a section over here, I'll go ahead and finish it coming down. Um, and then the last thing we need to do is we need to sketch in what actually is the new section down here. And it's going to be curved. It's going to take on that radius. It's going to go down. And then that curve would actually continue on. Excuse me, it would be a little bit taller. That curve would be right in here. And so on this one, look how much room we've got for that handle. Okay, lastly, let's go ahead and hatch the inside surfaces. And here's a place where you might even see that hatching really provides an additional means to um, seeing what's happening with the form, just as that rolls up. Now, what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to try and reduce that height so we don't have to put this detail in there. Um, and what we're also going to do is we're going to carry a pocket below that handle that will allow people to get their hands inside the grill um, and divide this thing up with a, with a, with a control pen. And I'm going to try and do it about the same perspective. Now, what I didn't do here, and you'll notice out here and right here, I didn't add a lot of three-point perspective to it. On this one, I'm going to try and do that. So there's just a straight vertical. This is coming back at an increased angle. This should be heading over about like so. And then if I start to think about that three-point perspective, I'm going to pull that out. I'm going to pull it out over here slightly. And... Um, and thinking about where this need, the top of this thing needs to be closer to the horizon line. The lines going towards the left vanishing point are converging much slower. Excuse me, towards the left vanishing point, but converging much quicker. 
than the ones going towards the right vanishing point. The other thing we're going to do to this is we're going to add a shelf out next, just a single shelf out next to uh, this lid. So proportionally, I think that that, let's just see what happens. Let's sketch in this curve right there. That may be too much. Let's, no, that's okay. And we want to, con no, no, that's going to be, the, the thickness of my handle is going to be about what I established right here. So I want my handle to be about that thick. The cantilever part comes up. That's not going to be the right proportion for what I want, but that, that may be okay. We may exaggerate the front edge of this, the front curve. So what I'm looking at right here is basically what we looked at down here. Is I want to find a midpoint. And I want to translate that midpoint out away from the surface. So it needs to go through this line tangent. And it's going to need to come back around fairly quickly to get to there. Um, so let me translate this down. That point's going to come out. It's going to come out about that far. I've also got that curve coming right here. It should be coming back quick. I've got another portion of that curve right there. So I'm basically carrying that same curve and thinking about how to uh, rotate it just a little bit this way as I as I sketch in multiple curves. Okay, so we've got this point, it's gonna head back to there. I need to divide this this up into three sections and we're not going to see much at all of the back of this one. This detail is actually going to extend down a little bit further. Oops. Carry that curve through. I'll show you exactly what's happening there in just a minute. Um, man, that, that increased curve is is going to change the way that we're not going to add a shelf to this. Uh, I'm going to have the thickness of the handle there. Somewhere in here I need to put uh, the, the end of the sheet metal part of the grill. Draw the radius for the front of that. Carry that up. This will go straight down. Actually, we're going to see what it looks like. No, we're not. It's going to go straight down. We need a firebox on this thing. Let's just say it comes down all the way to where that control panel is. Let's put this one at an angle. Put it back. We've also got a curve coming across this way. That we could have constructed but I feel pretty confident. In our ability to create that. This is going to be a little bit darker. Not so dark, a little bit darker. Straight line coming down. That there, this shouldn't be so dark, but I need to define it. I do need to show the bottom of the grill lid, which translates over into this portion of the uh, casting. That's where the casting stops. Over here, it's getting real tight. You can barely see what's going on. There's our handle. Here is just this detail. I've also got this control panel here. 
It's going to be a separate part. And that shows how I create that pocket for the hand. And then the last detail we're putting here is the, uh, we'll just call it a kickstand. This is a pretty aggressive looking grill. And the last thing that we'll do, we could also come back with our tools, darken this in, but I feel pretty good about where this is going. There's a few other lines that I want to make sure are dark, including the flat back here. And we'll step up and then over. I used a straight edge. I want to show what's happening with my section line. It comes up through the middle, and look how little of the back side of this we see. It's going to follow that angle we put in there. It should intersect the top of our grill lid and then go back. One thing I haven't put in here is a couple of lines to show the beginning and the end of the roll of that radius. I can very well define this corner. That's a pretty sharp little corner. Oh, and then we can also show with the contour lines what's happening with the handle. Okay, and so lastly, let's uh, let's add a hatch to the right side surfaces. And what I want you to really, again, pay attention to is the perceived difference in the distance that we see here versus here, and then the same thing over on this flat surface. And if you're just looking at the handle and the details on the handle, we see almost as much of the top of this handle as we do over here. But if we translate and think about that over here where that handle connects, we see so little of it here, excuse me, so much of it here and so little of it because that surface is curving towards us both uh, on the top of that lid and then also on the front of, uh, of that lid and the handle. 